Two years ago, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk boldly predicted that United Launch Alliance, or ULA, would be dead as a doornail. Now, it appears his prophecy is coming to fruition. According to three sources who spoke to Ars Technica, ULA is likely to be sold before the end of the year. Investment firm Morgan Stanley and consulting firm Bain & Company are reportedly managing the transaction, though the details of the potential sale have yet to be disclosed publicly. If the sale goes through, it would mark a major shift in the global aerospace industry, as ULA is one of the world's most important rocket companies. It remains to be seen what the future holds for ULA, but Elon Musk's prediction may soon become a reality. This is the end of an era for the global rocket industry. So, what does the future hold for ULA? How did CEO Tori Bruno respond to the news? And who can step in to save the company? All these questions and more will be answered in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The sale of United Launch Alliance, a company that has been a cornerstone of the industry for nearly two decades, would mark the end of an era. ULA was formed in 2005 as part of a deal brokered by the U.S. government, which sought to ensure the military had access to both Atlas and Delta rockets to launch national security satellites into space. To create ULA, Lockheed Martin and Boeing merged their respective launch businesses, each taking a 50% stake in the company. This union proved to be highly beneficial for both parent companies, as ULA held a monopoly on launching national security missions and, effectively, NASA science probes. In return for a 100% mission success rate, ULA received large launch contracts and an annual subsidy of approximately $1 billion from the U.S. Department of Defense to maintain launch readiness. In response to a request for comment, Boeing and Lockheed Martin released nearly identical statements. Consistent with our corporate practice, we don't comment on potential market rumors or speculation about financial activities. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, only said, Thank you, in a tweet after a Twitter user asked, Does Tori Bruno come with the deal? A testament to his exemplary communication and ambassadorship for aerospace engineering. This likely serves as an acknowledgement of the aforementioned information. Undoubtedly, SpaceX will not anticipate this as it will be losing one of its most formidable rivals. But what is the reason for this debacle? It's clear that ULA has been losing market share to SpaceX since the latter's emergence in the early 2010s. The Falcon 9 rocket, renowned for its reliability, was sold at a much lower cost than ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV rockets, giving SpaceX a competitive edge. Moreover, SpaceX successfully sued the U.S. government to gain access to national security missions and launched its first such mission in 2017. This has been a major blow to ULA's profitability. So, who can make the purchase of ULA? Despite SpaceX's dominance in the global launch industry, ULA still holds a prominent place. With no shortage of suitors, ULA has significant assets that will help them remain competitive. In May, they will debut their new heavy lift rocket, Vulcan which may close the gap in terms of price competitiveness with SpaceX. ULA has, agreement, ULA has an agreement with the U.S. military to launch 60% of their national security payloads from 2023 to 2027. And they have already won a commercial contract to launch 38 missions for Amazon's Project Kuiper satellite Mega Constellation. Additionally, ULA has sizable and valuable facilities in Colorado, Alabama, and Florida. And they have strong political capital in those states and beyond. The following companies could potentially be among the bidders for ULA as the sale process moves forward this year. It remains to be seen which entities will be vying for the chance to acquire this renowned aerospace and defense contractor, however. One of the parent companies, either Lockheed Martin or Boeing, could acquire the other. Lockheed Martin appears to be the more likely purchaser, given its recent strategic investments in the launch industry, such as its stake in ABL Space Systems. This move would further solidify Lockheed Martin's position as a leader in the aerospace 
aerospace industry. Amazon is also likely to be highly interested in acquiring ULA. The company owned by Jeff Bezos has already signed a Project Kuiper launch agreement, granting them intimate knowledge of ULA's business. This would give Amazon priority access to Vulcan launches, ensuring the Kuiper constellation is launched in a timely manner, as well as strengthening their ties to the Department of Defense. Blue Origin, another company owned by Bezos, may also be interested in acquiring ULA. Although there is a firewall between Blue Origin and Amazon, Blue Origin has already won a share of Project Kuiper launches, which comes out to 12 with its new Glenn rocket. However, there are some questions about how quickly new Glenn can be brought into commercial service. But by purchasing ULA, Blue Origin could consolidate its share of Kuiper missions and earn guaranteed funding from the Department of Defense as well as saving money on Vulcan launches by providing BE-4 rocket engines at cost. Other potential bidders include Northrop Grumman, which has a vested interest in national security and provides reliable rocket motors for Vulcan, L3 Harris, which has already acquired engine maker Aerojet Rocketdyne, a private equity firm such as the one that AE Industrial Partners invested in Firefly Aerospace, or even a technological giant like Apple, which is looking to develop its own space constellation for communications purposes. And finally, one cannot forget SpaceX. However, they might be sitting this one out as there's nothing for them to gain from it. In the end, the potential sale of ULA comes with many questions for the buyer. ULA is facing a number of challenges as it navigates the rapidly changing landscape of the global launch industry. Chief among them is the long-term sustainability of the traditional space company in the face of SpaceX's dominance. Additionally, other US competitors such as Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and Relativity Space are emerging, though none of them pose an immediate threat to you. ULA. However, in the next 5 to 10 years, one or more of these companies could have a fully reusable rocket that is priced significantly lower than Vulcan. Moreover, ULA requires substantial investment to remain competitive. Over the past two decades, the parent companies have tended to extract profits from ULA rather than investing in the development of new technology. For instance, Vulcan was largely funded by the US military, which provided ULA with development grants grants totaling $967 million. To remain competitive in the new era of commercial launch, ULA will need to be liberated to innovate and have the necessary resources to do so. What are your thoughts on failure? Does the prospect of failing embarrass you and hinder you from achieving your goals? Honestly, any individual or organization has its own share of problems. Even the biggest private rocket company Helmed by Elon Musk, SpaceX is famous for its explosive setbacks. However, the distinguishing factor between those who succeed from the rest lies in how they respond to failure. And recently, ULA has witnessed a major explosion of their rocket. United Launch Alliance suffered a major setback during testing late last month. No one was injured, but the accident made for dramatic visuals. A column of burning clear hydrogen shot up into a mushroom cloud that dwarfed the test stand. Their test article is definitely more than just damaged. The anomaly was captured on video cameras operated by Blue Origin, which is restoring a nearby test stand. Located about 100 meters from the United Launch Alliance facility, Blue Origin has invested more than $100 million in NASA's old test stand 4670 for acceptance testing of its BE-4 and BE-3U rocket engines. A Blue Origin source confirmed that a mushroom cloud formed from the anomaly. It's worth mentioning that afterward, United Launch Alliance asked Blue Origin to delete the explosive video footage from the company's computers, which Blue Origin agreed to. However, after the considerable buzz surrounding this unfortunate event, this week Bruno himself finally released a video of the explosion. He admitted hydrogen leak H2 accumulated inside the rig, found an ignition source, burned fast, overpressure caved in our forward dome, and damaged the rig. Tori also confirms that May 4th as planned is not achievable for the debut launch of Vulcan. My understanding is they need about four weeks from the time of the flight readiness firing at the Cape 
and this has not occurred yet. Time is running out for ULA to complete the development of Vulcan and fly two certification missions this year. This would allow the vehicle to begin flying national security payloads for the Space Force. ULA had hoped to fly its first national security mission in 2023, but now that seems virtually impossible. In the end, spacecraft development is a risky and sometimes explosive business. Just a scratch, Elon Musk said about ULA's accident. Musk is actually more optimistic than Bruno himself, and this is one reason his companies are always at the top of any list. Now, gather around, boys and girls, and let me tell you a story about how SpaceX's first slew of failures led up to its most pivotal moments in the company's growth. Back on August 2nd of 2008, SpaceX launched its third flight of the Falcon 1 launch vehicle the predecessor to the Falcon 9 launch vehicles that the company flies today. It was a defining moment for the company. Elon had a couple of years prior stated in the press that his $100 million personal investment in the company would get us up to three tries, and if SpaceX couldn't be successful by the third flight, they may have to admit defeat. In addition to the pressure created by this narrative in the press, the lobbyist armies of their competitors had been in overdrive in DC trying to undermine SpaceX and damage their credibility by painting them as too risky and inexperienced in order to protect their multi-billion dollar interests in the space launch business. The result, SpaceX executed a picture-perfect flight of the first stage clearing some of the highest risk points of the mission. However, shortly after the first stage flight immediately following stage separation, SpaceX lost the vehicle and, ergo, the mission. The team knew something had gone wrong in a big way. Musk and about seven to eight of the most senior technical people at SpaceX were commanding the mission from a trailer in the back of the Hawthorne factory, and all SpaceX staff waited anxiously for the trailer door to open for someone to say something. The mood in the building hung thick with despair. You have to keep in mind that by this point, SpaceX was only six years old, and many people have been working 70 to 80 plus hours a week, swimming against extremely powerful currents, like difficult barriers in technology, institution, politics, and finance by sheer force of their blood and sweat. They had all given so much, were mentally and physically exhausted, and really needed a win in order to replenish their spiritual wells, and give them the faith to keep following this man up a treacherous mountain that had depleted the hopes and resources of many others who had come to conquer it before. That night would forever impact the future of the company. It had the potential to send the company into a downward spiral from which they may not have ever recovered from. A failure in leadership would have destroyed the company not only in the eyes of the press or potential consumers, but it would have destroyed them internally. When Elon came out, he walked past the press and first addressed the company. We knew this was going to be hard. It is, after all, rocket science. Then listed the half dozen or so countries who had failed to even successfully execute a first stage flight and get to outer space. A feat they had accomplished successfully that day. But they needed to pick themselves up and dust themselves off because they had a lot of work to do. Then Musk said, with as much fortitude and ferocity as he could muster after having been away for about 20 plus hours by this point, that, for my part, I will never give up, and I mean never, and that if they stuck with him, they'd win. It was the most impressive display of leadership that anyone could have ever witnessed at the time. Within moments, the energy of the building went from despair and defeat to a massive buzz of determination as people began to focus on moving forward instead of looking back. This shift happened collectively across all 300 plus people in a matter of not more than five seconds. It was an unbelievably powerful experience. But then what happened in the days and weeks following that night is nothing short of a series of miracles. Within a matter of hours, the SpaceX team identified the likely cause of the launch failure. Typically, turnaround time from others in the launch business can range from weeks to months for failure investigations. But that team combed through every ounce of data to make sure they understood exactly what went wrong as quickly as possible. 
and by August 6th, they announced the results of their investigation and came 100% clean with the supporters and customer community in order to make sure they could retain their trust in this difficult time. In only seven weeks, they had another rocket fully manufactured, integrated, and on location, ready to fly again. No one else could have done this in less than six months with unlimited human and financial resources. But SpaceX did it in six weeks with less than 400 people and on a restricted financial diet. On September 28th of 2008, SpaceX flew its Falcon 1 launch vehicle from Kwajalein Atoll in the South Pacific and executed its first 100% successful launch, becoming the world's first privately built rocket to achieve Earth orbit. An accomplishment of truly epic portions, proportions and a task previously completed by only six of the mightiest nations in the history of the world. A much needed and much deserved victory for the entire SpaceX team as it hopefully will turn out for the future of humanity overall. Yes, Falcon 9 is now the most launched among US rockets. And this, in my opinion, is the true character of Elon Musk. Undeterred in the face of all odds, undaunted by the fear of failure, and forged in the battlefields of some of the most terrifyingly technical and capital-intensive challenges that any human being could choose to take on. And somehow, he comes out alive every time, with the other guy's head on a silver platter. The upcoming Starship will serve as another testament to the notion that embracing failure is a necessary step towards achieving success. And with that, today's episode has come to its end. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.